Dear friends, welcome back to Automate with Rakesh. In this video, we are starting a new topic that is UiPath Integration Services. This is an introduction video wherein you will get complete understanding of what is UiPath Integration Service and what are the components. Let's first see the agenda of today's video. First, we will get to understand what is UiPath integration service. We get a definition of it. We see what is integration service. How do you access the UiPath integration service? We will see that. And we will also understand three important components of UiPath integration service in detail. We will also see UiPath activities and packages for each connectors. What is a connector? How do you utilize activities and packages? Why do you need them? All of these details, which are currently a question mark, we will get answer to all of those questions. So stay tuned and let's continue. First of all, before I explain you what is UiPath integration service, I want you to have a look at the images. Look at this image. What it talks, connect to Google Maps. This says connect to Gmail. And if you read it, it talks Connecting allows UiPath products, so this is UiPath, this is Gmail, to interact with Gmail data. So UiPath can now interact with Gmail data on your behalf. This may include, it can read my emails, it can compose a new email, write, it can modify certain things within the Gmail, it can delete certain things within my Gmail. All of the accesses that you have got in your Gmail, similar kind of access can be given to UiPath to perform certain actions automatically. Let's say sending an email automatically, right? So just look at the image. Now let, let me show you a few more images. Look at it. Now UiPath connect to Azure and the same, you know, vice versa. Azure can send certain information to UiPath. UiPath can also send certain information to Azure. Look at service now. So what is happening? Every definition that you read, it talks around a specific point. It says UiPath products can interact with certain applications data. UiPath products can interact with Microsoft Azure data. So it is talking about interact with the applications data. This is the important point you need to catch. Okay, let me show you one more image. You can connect UiPath with Salesforce. You can connect UiPath with Zoom all these options, all the images you have seen. Now, this is the right time to understand the definition. So what is UiPath integration service? UiPath integration service helps in directly and securely connect to external applications or external systems. I can connect to Gmail, I can connect to Salesforce, I can connect to ServiceNow and many such applications. So why are you connecting? What is the purpose of you connecting? For example, I'm connecting to Gmail. What is the purpose? Maybe you would like to send an automated email. Maybe you would like to read the incoming emails with certain subject line, with certain content inside that. Maybe you would like to manage your Gmail entirely. You Maybe you would like to delete certain things from your Gmail. It could be any certain purpose for which you would like to directly and securely connect to an external application. For example, Gmail. Gets the data. So what, what this integration service do? It gets the data from external applications and systems quickly and reliably and it can interact eff efficiently any kind of actions you would like to perform. You know, all those things can be done. It will be more clear as we see demo of all of this. But from here, you have understood integration service is something that is used to, you know, connect UiPath with an external application in a directly in a, in a secure way so that you can get the required data and communicate with the external application in a secure way in a reliable way. Okay, so that is the point that you have captured from this slide. Now let's see a few more things. Like you saw certain few numbers of connectors, 
connectors that is not limited to them there are at present there are around 90 plus connectors are readily available for use and where are they av available they are available in the ui path integration service you can see certain images i have kept here for different different applications i can connect i can connect my ui path with multiple different applications popular applications that's not it it may be possible in your environment you might be using an application which is only internal that application is very internal to you to your company so you can also have an option you can build your own connector and connect ui path with the internal application with ui path integration services you can build your own connectors look at it lot of benefits that we are going to get by learning integration service by implementing integration service of ui path now let's see after seeing after you know hearing all these terms one thing that comes to our mind okay how do you access it first of all it is quite simple you log into cloud.uipath.com and then click on integration service let me quickly move on to my browser screen and show you how do you log into integration service so here it, you can see i have logged into cloud.uipath.com you click on this button and then here you find integration service all you need to do click on this integration service by default it will land to the connectors tab so this is the connector tab in the connector tab you can see you have got you know 90 plus connectors at the moment and in the future it might keep growing it may be keep growing so you can see salesforce sap slack snowflake you know, all different kind of applications known applications popular applications connectors are available okay so this is the library of connectors now what happens for example let me click on one of the uh, for example gmail if i click on gmail it tells me connect to gmail if i click on this what happens if i have, if you have already signed in using gmail if you hit on connect here so this is the connector okay connect it brings you it gives you that your email address wherever you have signed in and then if you hit on connect if you click on that continue you know you see these options select what ui path for gmail can access read compose send edit so based on your requirement you can select and hit on continue so this is how you can integrate with multiple different applications and the steps will be slightly different for example if i would like to connect to let's say uh, scroll down scroll down scroll down let me connect with uh, let's say microsoft azure okay if i click on this and hit on connect to microsoft azure you know it asks for certain different things it is asking for a client id it is asking for a client secret it asking for tenant id subscription id all this you can get it from microsoft azure so once we get in deep dive on how do you integrate a certain application that's where probably we can demonstrate all of this how you get this information from azure and how you can put it here okay but for the moment just understand this each connector works in a different way in terms of what input it needs for example let me select something else for example sap twilio for example if i click on twilio connect to twilio you know it asks for a different things account sid auth token these are all available on the twilio application if you know twilio probably there you also know how to find this so different connectors would ask you different inputs for for the application to be able to connect right for the ui part to connect with that application it requires certain details to be filled in so as we have seen this connectors tab and you understood connected tab is a collection of or a library of different connectors for various applications so that is about connected tab if i click on connection let's say i have established my connection with gmail then what would happen ui path will get integrated with my gmail and here you would find a entry which will say status success that means it is connected your ui path is connected with gmail so here you find a list of different connections that you have made and the third important component is trigger so these are the three components connector connections and triggers in the triggers 
i can start up automation for example the moment i receive an email in my gmail there has to be a process in my orchestrator which should automatically get triggered so based on certain events happening on the external application i can set a trigger which can start an automation so you got a briefing about all this let's move on to our slides so you have learned how do you access uipath integration service and you have got a bit of you know you visited all these three different tabs let's learn slightly in detail this three tabs that you saw connectors connections and triggers these are called three main components of uipath integration service now the very first component which is the connector in the connectors tab you can find collections of pre built connectors we saw that right for different applications we saw that these connectors are compatible with uipath studio and other products like uipath apps now let's understand little bit in deeper for example i have used the service now connector after using the service now connector or let's say you have established the connection you have entered all the uh, api key and uh, client uh, id and all that so once you have established the connection with service now ui path and service now are now both connected after that let's say i have to build a automation on my ui path studio you know if certain event happened then i wanted to create an incident so service now is a ticketing tool you can create tickets incident management tool let's say you would like to create a new incident based on certain thing happening in your automation process or let's say you would like to um, get the records you know number of incidents created in service now you would like to get them to your uipath studio to further process it so all these things can be done once you have established connection with the service now application now how you do it once you have made the connection in uipath integration service you have you have clicked on this then it last certain inputs you entered those inputs and finally you have made a connection of uipath and service now after that coming back to your uipath studio you will be installing a specific package for service now for example here i have highlighted service now there is a cloud package once you have installed it what happens on your uipath studio you will be able to see for service now these many activities you will be able to see and start using them based on your requirement so what is the first point we are learning here each third party application connector for example service now comes with dedicated set of activities that allows you to combine automation at the api level with the regular ui automation for that specific application so now with having these activities your uipath studio is going to directly interact with that application and get you what you need the activity packages help you reduce the process development effort now for example if you have to create an incident in service now first you will open browser service now log into service now then you will click on the left side menu then you open incident so there are so many steps you have to follow if you, if you have to do a ui automation now with the help of integration service because your uipath is already connected with service now all you have to do drag and drop this activity and it will do all the job behind the scene so what is the benefit once implemented api automations typically run a lot faster than ui based automations ui based automations you click on a button you create an incident you update the incident you click on a description so lot of ui related automation you have to do lot of steps you have to take but having this activities in place you have integrated so there is a connection already built you simply drag and drop this activity and do the job which becomes which makes your automation run a lot faster than ui based automations and usually require a significant less maintenance many times our projects which are built on ui automation will fail because of various reasons there is a problem with the selector or something changed in the application so in this one you don't have to maintain so much you will definitely experience that once you have implemented integration service in your project if you have done a project using integration service definitely your project will require very very less maintenance 
let's move on the second component is the connection so what is this connection in the connection tab you can see a list of all the established connections for all the connectors let's say you have made a connection with service now you will see it here you made a connection with gmail you will see it here you made a connection with azure you see it here so it gives you a list of connections that you have already established and you will see a status called success okay so as we move forward as we slowly get into one one uh, application and show you how it how you can integrate that's where you will see all this uh, you know entries available under the connection tab okay moving on to our next slide the third component the trigger component so what is this trigger component triggers provide a mechanism for subscribing to specific events from the third party application i gave you an example you receive an email from a certain vendor or you receive an email with a subject line or right you the moment you receive that um, or for example in service now there is an incident got created and tagged to a certain group the moment it the incident gets created you want a process to start and fix that problem right or process certain request automatically so you can subscribe to different events happening on the third party application and based on that you can start your automation okay so triggers provide a mechanism for subscribing to specific events from the third party applications giving you the flexibility to automatically start processes in orchestrator okay so we have learned all these three components we got a overview of all of this and we have got bit of examples to understand what is an integration service now going forward we'll deep dive and learn many more things coming in the integration service videos so thank you for watching guys please give it a like if this video has helped you to understand the overview of what our integration service is all about so thank you for watching let's move on to our next topic